So you've got your workbench, you've got your hand tools nice and sharp, and you want to get some hand work done. That's a really good start, but um, another key ingredient in doing good work um, is keeping the stock from moving where the tool wants it to go. Now, uh, vices are pretty good for that. Um, they can handle most situations, but it's not always uh, the most efficient way to do it. I don't really like clamping and unclamping parts every time I have to plane a face or an edge or switch from parts. So I like to use stops. And basically, in its simplest form, the stop is something that keeps the part from moving in the direction the tool wants it to move. Uh, this is one of the simplest stops I can think of. I call it a T-square. It's a thin strip of wood, a drywall screw, and a little block. That's basically about it, but it does a lot of work in my shop. Uh, this little cleat gets clamped in my front vise. On the opposite end, you can either clamp that in place, or I've drilled a little dog hole opposite my vices on both my benches, and that just keeps that strip from spinning, and this creates a really secure stop the full length of my bench. So I do most of my parts with this, everything from table aprons to full-on tabletops I can handle with just this stop. What I like about it is I can do a lot of work. And give the part a flip, and I can keep on going. I can work through a tabletop this way, I can work through multiple parts really quickly uh, without clamping and unclamping a vise. Now, the only time I start to run into trouble is when my parts get longer and skinnier like table legs. So for stuff like this, I have a different jig that offers a little bit more support. So this jig is a little bit more involved, but not a whole lot more. There's a plywood base. There's my end stop. And in addition, there's a strip along the length, which gives me a side stop as well. On the bottom, I have a little fin which clamps into my front vise to hold everything in place. So with that in place, I can knock out my legs pretty quickly without this workpiece wanting to wander around too much. In addition, when I'm working on table legs, uh, I tend to like to do some shaping, whether it's chamfers or even more involved shapes to where I wanna hold the stock at a 45 degree angle. You know, a really down and dirty way to do it is to hold it with one hand and chamfer with the other hand. It works well enough for simple chamfers, but to really get down and do the job right, I have a couple of V blocks, which I screw to this long stop. The blocks are nothing more than a block of wood, a couple 45 degree cuts. It creates a little pocket for the stock to sit in at 45 degree angle. And on the front one, I've added a little strip of wood to act as a front stop. Those guys just get screwed in place. Now I can rest my workpiece in there so I can take a two-handed approach to my block plane, my spoke shave, whatever I want to be doing to be shaping that leg. Um, it's one of those things where I don't always go through that trouble, but when I do, I'm really glad I did. So I've got the majority of my parts taken care of, my long skinny parts taken care of. Um, I have a separate planing stop for thin stock and small stock, like drawer size, drawer dividers, that sort of thing. It's a little bit different style of stop in that uh, this is basically a bench hook. And what a bench hook is, is it's a piece of wood, this piece of MDF with a fence. Again, that's keeping my workpiece from moving. In addition, there's a cleat on the bottom and that registers against the edge of my bench. So as a workpiece and the jig are moving forward, that cleat contacts the edge of my bench and everything is really secured. So I can plane on this all day long. Do my flipping, get all that work done. The other thing I like this jig for is when I'm trying to square up the edges of stock and it's really thin, um, it can be really tippy. It can fall over easily. 
and even if I can get an edge on there, it can be difficult to really maintain a perfectly 90 degree edge on parts like this. So instead, I take advantage of the fact that this elevates the stock above the workbench a little bit. So I'll just lay it flat. I'll just hang it over the edge of the jig a little bit, and I can throw my hand plane flat on the workbench. This way, I can plane this edge really, really easily, no tipping, no parts falling over, and I can ensure that this edge stays 90 degrees to my face. Uh, really cool, really fun. Um, this jig I use quite a bit. Now, the thing I don't use this jig for is shooting the ends of my stock. For that, I go to a dedicated shooting board. Again, this is designed to use the plane on its side, but rather than keep it on the side on my workbench, the base consists of two layers of plywood to create a little ledge for the plane to ride on. Um, the edge of that also creates um, a reference surface for the plane, and the fence is attached uh, with a little star knob and oversized hole. What this allows me to do is it gives me just enough wiggle room to let me square up that fence every time I use it. So whenever I'm ready to batch out some parts, I'll pull out my combo square, get it nice and square, tighten that up, and I'm good to go. That fence is flush with that rabbit. So what that does is it creates a zero clearance edge to prevent the stock from chipping out on this back corner. Uh, really great for squaring up parts. I also use this for uh, cleaning up my 45 degree miters on frame parts and stuff. For that, I use a plastic speed square with a little rabbited piece of stock screwed on to act as a fence. The base of this square, it sits in a groove that I've ripped in my shooting board and that rests against the fence. So the square against the fence is what gives me a really accurate 45 degree angle. And it makes it really easy to plane this at 45 degrees and also maintain a really vertical edge. So my parts come together really well. Uh, the one thing this 45 degree plane stop doesn't handle are wider parts like uh, box parts because I could put it up here. Um, obviously my plane isn't that wide and it would still be a precarious way to plane that. So instead I have another shooting jig which is designed specifically for those types of miters. It's a little bit different in that the top layer of the jig um, has an edge that's cut at 45 degrees. In addition, there's a fence added. Basically it's a strip of wood where I rip a 45 degree angle on one edge and glue it down. This creates a V for my hand plane to sit in, which registers my plane at 45 degrees. So all I need to do is throw the workpiece flat on the jig. And I can plane a really accurate angle while maintaining a really square edge along its length, which is really important for everything to come together nice and square. So between a T-square, my jig for long parts, uh, my bench stop for small parts, uh, and a couple shooting boards. This handles all of my planing tasks. There's a couple more uh, jigs that I use when I'm sawing. The one I use for larger stock, again, it's a bench hook where I have a fence and a cleat. This fence has a series of cuts at 90 and 45 degrees that guide the saw to cut that angle. The workpiece again goes against the fence using a western saw that cuts on the push stroke. As I'm making that cut, that workpiece is forced against the fence. The cleat is forced against the bench. I can do a lot of work really efficiently. Um, I'm really only depending on this to get within a fraction of square the angle I want to cut, and I'll use a shooting board to clean everything up. So between this and the shooting boards, I can do really accurate, efficient work with hand tools. The other saw hook I like to use is for smaller parts. 
This is really simple. It's just a block of hardwood with a rabbit cut in it. This rabbit creates a fence to secure the stock. And I just clamped this in my vise. And because I use a Japanese saw for trim work, because it's got a really fine teeth and it leaves a really clean edge, this cuts on the pull stroke. So rather than having the fence oriented away from me, I'm actually having the fence now towards me. So I'm pulling the workpiece into the fence as I make this cut. This also has 90 and 45 degree curves in it. The way I make those is I just hold my combo square up to the block of wood, make a cut to get me square, bring a pencil line down to give me a kerf that's plumb. Since I'm using the saw itself to make that kerf, it gives me a really clean, accurate registration line for making all of my cuts. I use this quite a bit for small stock. I really like this. And this is one of those things where, you know, cutting small parts, if you're trying to take that to the chop saw or table saw, it's really scary. It's a bad way to do it. This is one case where the hand tool is really the best way you should be doing this. This makes it really easy. So a couple saw hooks, a bunch of plain hooks, you know, you invest um, an afternoon in your shop making these things and you can do a whole lot of hand work. Uh, definitely give it a try. I think it's going to help you out quite a bit. If you want more information on making all this stuff, I did an article for Fine Woodworking Magazine. Take a look. Hopefully that'll help you out. Definitely give it a try and you're going to be doing some good work.